Larry Kudlow said, Trump has given us the greatest political comeback in American history. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. They try to attack this man's character. They try to assassinate him. They try to um, use lawfare, weaponize lawfare against him. They tried everything to take this man out. And he came back even stronger. Fight, fight, fight. Remember what he said after he got shot? Man, um, and the left is just coping. They're having a difficult time with it. They're crying all over the internet and tears. And it is an exciting, exciting time to be witnessing. An exciting, exciting thing to be witnessing. Um, this is amazing. I can't wait to see Larry Cutlow, um, hear Larry Cutlow's take on all of this. Um, but it's amazing. The uh, TDS, the Trump derangement sy syndrome is... In full effect, I've had tons of clients so far dealing with it. Um, the coping is crazy. So we're going to play this clip and we're going to talk about it. But before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button. Share this out so we can get this information out there. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And hit that alarm bell so you know when I'm putting out new stuff. Also, check out my link tree in the description. It has a link to my Patreon. That's where I talk about things that I can't talk about here. There's also a link to my Instagram and my X account. So follow me there as well. All right, let's get right to this clip. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Kudlow. Hello, folks. Welcome to Kudlow. I'm Larry Kudlow. So, voters are smart. They decided enough was enough, and then let Donald Trump to a landslide victory of historic proportions. The Amen. miracle of American democracy. Yes. We've got Joe Concha and Mark Simone and Tammy Bruce on all that in just a few moments. And markets are giving Trump a 1,500-point vote of confidence. Wow. We all saw how the markets just went crazy this morning. Um, Bitcoin is out of control. I mean, the stock market's doing great. Um, futures, um, people are excited that um, America's going to be back on the right track and we're going to be making money again. We also have Senator Rick Scott, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik waiting in the wings. And just moments away, Kamala Harris about to give her white flag of surrender speech at Howard University, which she should have. We already seen that speech. <laughs> she didn't want to do it yesterday. Um, you know, this, this, this um, video happened a little bit early. We saw the speech. She, uh, <laughs> she is just bitter. She would not come out, left them people waiting for hours, just like... Hillary Clinton did in 2016. This goes to show these people don't care anything about you. They don't care anything about you. Had them people out there that were supporting her waiting and stuff. Have done last night, but then again, we'll take you to it when it finally happens. We will run the whole speech. All right. Donald Trump riding a populist revolt to a new golden age. And that's the subject of the riff. Donald Trump won a landslide victory yesterday. He swept all the swing states. He broke down the so-called blue wall of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. He had good coattails, bringing five new Republican senators in. The House going to remain in Republican hands. Mr. Trump won the popular vote 51-47, roughly a margin of 5 million votes. It was an historic victory, somewhat similar to Ronald Reagan back in 1980. Indeed, mm -hmm. Mr. Trump has given us the greatest political comeback in American history. I definitely agree. And thank goodness it was a blowout because so the left can't come out and say, oh, the election was um, stolen. They can't say that, um, um, oh, he didn't he didn't win the popular vote. We need to get rid of the Electoral College. All these old stuff that they used to say, the same stuff that they threw out in 2016, they can't say it this time because it was a decisive win. You may recall Earlier this week, I made the case that the pollsters did not understand the populist surprise that was coming on Election Day. And mm -hmm. sure enough, virtually none of them did. Here's what they missed. Mr. Trump has put together an expanded populist working folks and middle American coalition. That includes young, Latinos, blacks, whites, Asians, women. All right. Trump four points better with women. Yep. And uh, unions. He founded this coalition back in 2015, 2016, and it has ebbed and flowed over the years. But the key point in this election is that he expanded the coalition. 
He wasn't just speaking to the base, he was expanding the base. Young voters had a 19-point shift to Trump, black men 12 points, Hispanic men 16 points, no college degrees, 8 points, incomes under $50,000, 10 points, Catholics, 8 points higher. Most pollsters never understood the new Trump coalition in the first place, mm -hmm. and they surely didn't understand how much he was expanding it. And these are folks who felt left out and abandoned by the big shots in New York and Washington, D.C. and California. Three quarters of the voters said Biden-Harris was piloting the country in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. These folks are fed up with high prices, falling real wages, an affordability crisis, open borders, crime, the woke culture, transgenderism and DEI and extremist climate policies and seemingly endless wars in Europe and the Middle East. This was the heart of the Trump populist coalition. Democrats were in complete denial. They never understood it. They never listened to these folks. Instead, they called them names, you know, deplorables, garbage, racist, mm -hmm. sexist. They called Trump a fascist, a Nazi, a threat to democracy. But nobody took the Kamala Democrats seriously. Nope. Trump's populist coalition rejected big government socialism and the left-wing wokeism. Democratic pollster Mark Penn was one of the few who seemed to understand Trump's worker coalition. Republican pollster Tony Fabrizio surely understood it, as did campaign managers Susie Wiles and Chris LaCivita. This was their strategy, expand the populist base, especially young people and minorities. This is what Mr. Trump was doing at all mm -hmm. those rallies, in the garbage truck, adding salt to the fries at McDonald's, mm -hmm. speaking to Catholic and other religious groups at the Al Smith dinner in New York, going to barber shops, rallies in the Bronx, bodegas in Harlem. The not, not to mention the Arabs. He went into the Arab communities and met with them. He met with the Muslims and talked to them and stuff. He went places that that um, Kamala Harris would never would never visit. Madison Square Garden rally. And it worked. It was a smashing political and electoral victory. And last night, in his victory speech, he told supporters that success would unify the country. Back. He said, promises made, promises kept. He intends to heal the country. He told them, God spared my life to save the country and restore America to greatness. Amen. He speaks of a golden age for America. The voters have given Mr. Trump an enormous mandate for change, and I believe he will use it to restore normalcy, peace, and prosperity. That's his ticket to greatness. And that's the riff. Absolutely. I totally, I totally agree with that. I think Trump is going to make those things happen. I'm looking forward to this presidency. I'm looking forward to the next four years and being prosperous um, and getting rid of and, and getting rid of this nonsense, the crazy stuff that's happening around this country and around this world. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Leave your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe, and check out jjthepsychotherapist.com for the latest in news. Until next time, peace.